So starting this week, we're coming into the run of programming for the next few weeks that TNA taped in New York City at the Hammerstein Ballroom. And you know, there's been a lot of talk in terms of people talking about that there was a great series of tapings and that this could be the start of something better for TNA. And truly, I hope that it is. But ultimately, my question is, is it really going to do much for the company? Is it really going to be all that game changing for them long term. And, you know, for a company that has so often throughout its 12 year history, in my opinion, focused on the here and now and the yesterday and not so much the tomorrow and the way in the future like maybe they need to, I just wonder if they've been positioning themselves so much to really only go after and attack these New York City tapings as a way to impress Spike TV, as a way to make a statement for themselves, and then everything else afterwards really hasn't been that well thought out, really hasn't been that well figured out, and it's kind of like, eh, we'll see where we go from there. we got to worry about now and right now and damn the future. I mean, because here's what I'm thinking, is that, you know, TNA is probably looking at it. You've got the return of the six-sided ring. You know you're going into New York where you're going to have a very passionate wrestling crowd. They're going to bring in some faces like the Team 3Ds and the Rhinos and the Tommy Dreamers, those ECW folks that'll be familiar to that New York City crowd and some other types of talents that would appeal in theory to the New York crowd. The guys like the Austin Aries of the worlds, the Bobby Roods of the world. You, you, you get what I'm saying. Uh, so there are those things that sit there and suggest that this could be something positive for the company. But then I sit there and say, isn't this the same setting that TNA was having trouble selling out? You know, whereas Slammiversary, they allegedly had 2,500 paying customers, which I still find incredibly hard to believe. They were having trouble selling out 800 seats for a venue in New York City, the biggest media market in the world, with a tremendously huge, loyal, smart, hardcore wrestling fan base. And here's my thing, too, as you get ready to go into these New York City tapings, I wonder if TNA is going to start falling into some of their old patterns of the past where they're trying to rehash ECW that needs to be let go. It's time to find a new direction. I find it so ironic that TNA and other wrestling companies have tried to latch on to ECW's legacy when ECW itself for so many years was about getting away from those legacies of the past and not latching on to anything except its own bootstraps and starting its own course and ch charting its own direction, if you will. And now I start to wonder, is this going to lead to some house of hardcore stupid invasion? You know, one of the big things is about, oh, is Dixie going to go through a table? Okay, so what if she does? Then what does that really mean? What does that really help? What does that really accomplish? You know, oh my God, Bully Ray and, you know, freaking Rhino and Tommy Dreamer and Kurt Angle's the authority figure. And now we're starting to creep right back up into the territory where the guys getting the most television time are the guys who have had their best years, maybe five, ten, or in some cases, frankly, 15 years ago. You know, you just look at it and you wonder, uh, now they're going to be featuring Jeff Hardy. They're bringing in Matt Hardy. And it's like I said, they're throwing everything at this to where even if these next few weeks of impact do come across really well and these next few weeks of impact do really deliver and they see a little bit of a bounce in the ratings, I just have some concerns about whether or not this is really going to do anything for the company long term and if they even care if it's going to do anything for the company long term. And as a consequence, is it really going to be that good for the company at all? Because again, for a company that for so long has lived in the here and now and frankly the yesterday, you know, when are they going to start living into the tomorrow and in the future and start looking ahead and starting to plan where they're going to be six months, a year, two, three, five years from now? Now, maybe the situation that TNA finds themselves in currently maybe indicates that they have no other choice. They have to be balls deep in it right here, right now, because there very could, well potentially could be no tomorrow, especially in terms of potentially getting a new television deal from Spike TV. But... I just wonder if TNA is going to go one route to try and sit there and make these next few weeks of television really good, 
or if they're going to go a different and I think more beneficial long-term route in order to make these next few weeks really good. I guess ultimately we will see. Um, you can let me know what you think. Do you think these New York City tapings will be good for the company, or do you think after they're done they really will have no long-term impact on TNA? I want to know your thoughts on this, so let me know down below.